Okay, and welcome back to my series on freeze drying techniques to help individuals make the most of their freeze dryer. Now, to reiterate what I have discussed in the past, uh, if you're gonna buy a freeze dryer, make sure you use it to its fullest advantage. Because if you put yourself in a dreamlike state, thinking that simply buying the freeze dryer is gonna suddenly mean that you, with little or no effort, are gonna have years and years worth of food, uh, in the case that we ever become Venezuelanized, you're just, you're kidding yourself, okay? Um, if you buy a freeze dryer based on the idea that a lot of internet folks will have you believe that all you got to do is, is freeze dry something and, and toss it into a bag and, and throw it on a shelf and in no time at all you're going to have a lot of food for times of want. And that, you know, if, if you're going to think critically, you're going to have to understand that that's just not true. And if you invest anywhere between $2,500 and $4,000, depending upon the vacuum pump that you get, in a freeze dryer, you don't want to let it go the way of the exercise bike. And we all know the story of the exercise bike. There are tons of jokes out there about people who have exercise bikes in their bedroom that they're using as expensive um, kind of in the way coat hangers. And when they bought them, they paid attention to the athletic type uh, guy or gal on the machine and they're looking at you and they're swinging back and forth and, and they're trying to make you believe that that's going to be easy and that that's all they do to become healthy and strong. And, and it's not. These are professional athletes. These are professional gym rats. These are professional bodybuilders that get on there and convince you that buying this exercise machine in no time at all is going to have you looking like them and we all know you know how that usually goes for me I've, I've done it actually a couple of times i did it when they first came out with the health rider and then i also bought a treadmill and they're both gone now and i never did i never did use them to uh, accomplish what the people on the television had me believing was going to happen to me if i would just you know fork out that uh, that fifteen hundred to two thousand three thousand dollars for that for that machine that I was going to put in my room use for maybe a week and then gradually taper off of and and end up not using it at all and unfortunately that happens with freeze dryers too they're expensive and people get all pie-eyed about them and they don't know uh, what they're getting into you really got to do your research. You really got to know that you're willing to do what's necessary. And because there's more investment than just the freeze dryer itself. The investment can be in the food also. And it can't all be leftover food because, face it, we don't have that much leftover food. If we just freeze dried and, and tried to properly put away our freeze dried food, we wouldn't have enough to last us as long as we think we might. Um, it would take us years and years to put away enough food to last for just, just a few months, if that's all we did. So you've got to change your mindset, okay? What I like to do is I don't like to just freeze dry food. I, I use a freeze dryer as a tool uh, to an end. I don't use it as the source of the end because uh, a freeze dryer in and of itself isn't going to provide you with an end product. You have to provide you with an end product. And if you know how much money you spend every month on food, if your idea is to freeze dry enough food to last you six months to a year, uh, you're gonna have to have a real plan. Okay, now I've, I've made um, uh, other videos about uh, food storage. I've been into food storage for a great, you know, a great long time, 35 plus years and I've been freeze drying for over two years now, so I have some experience. But I like to think critically. I like to think ahead. I like to, to ask myself, in the coming years, if I ever have to depend upon the food that I'm storing, what am I gonna think back and wish I had done previously to prepare for that time? And so thinking critically again, that, that's basically what I've done. What you see here, is an investment. This, none of this is leftovers. This is all food that I, I purchased specifically for the purpose of freeze drying. And I'm going to make a number of these videos showing different ways that I prepare food. Now this food hasn't gone into the freeze dryer yet. This food has just come out of my freezer and I'm going to go through each tray and explain to you what each one is and why I prepared it the way that I prepared it. 
So the first one, I bought a 10 pound chuck roast. It's a cheaper cut of meat and it's a little bit tougher. Now how I handled that was I had the butcher cut that roast into about half inch or maybe a little bit less slices. I, I told her to cut it into fajita meat. And uh, she did that and when I brought it home, I put it in a pressure cooker. And I pressure cooked it with just a little bit of water in there for about a half an hour, 45 minutes at the most. And then I took it off and took it out. And what that does is that's going to pull most of the oil out of that fat. Now, if you know anything about freeze drying, you know that fat does not freeze dry well. You can't freeze dry bacon. Hot dogs don't freeze dry unless they're especially prepared and pre-cooked. And, and, and I go into that in another video also. But anyhow, I got all the fat boiled out of it, and then I took each of the, the thin slices and I chopped it up into three quarter inch white pieces, and, and if there was any fat hanging around, um, I cut it off. So this is very, very lean, it's very tender, and it uh, was put into this tray with the intention that it was going to make two meals. Now, when this is all done, I'll make the second half of this, this video, and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to package it. But the two meals that I'm going to use here is I like the Zatarain's product. This is jambalaya, and I've got two boxes of it. It's not real expensive. And when I freeze dry it, I will pack half of this meat with one of these boxes in a 7 mil Mylar bag. And I'll do it in such a way that all you have to do is pull that one Mylar bag off, and it'll have the meat, it'll have the rice, it'll have the instructions um, how to rehydrate the, the freeze dried meat and how to prepare it. And, and you'll have two meals there for my wife and I. Actually, uh, more than um, uh, for my wife and I. There, there'll be two meals there, and if we um, are sparing with it, or food is at a premium or something, we can probably feed four adults with each one of these. Because this, this box of rice here says that it makes eight cups. Okay, so I could give two cups of food with meat and rice and seasoned to um, each of four people and we'd have food. I'm doing the same thing with this one. Uh, this is shrimp, it's pre-cooked, it's uh, been peeled and deveined with the tail off. So there's nothing but, but pure meat here. And again, I will make two meals out of this. This is that, uh, Zatarain's gumbo mix and I'll show you how I package that up. But this also with this meat, of course, makes eight one cup servings. So I have two meals. So in this two trays, I've got um, four meals that could feed four people. Now over here, I've done something a little bit different. Over here, these Velveeta skillets, they come with a foil pouch that has wet cheese in it or cheese sauce, okay? Something that needs to be freeze dried. Now, I could have done both of these packages the same way, but I chose to do them differently because when I looked at this, the, the contents of this package, I thought to myself, well, I could go either way, but for this demonstration, I want to go ahead and I want to pre-prepare this and freeze dry it so that when you take it out of the freeze dryer, you can just add the, the proper amount of moisture, water, let it absorb, and then heat it up, and then you're going to have a meal. The reason that I did it that way was this little package right here. This, this is really pathetic, really. The, the name of this one is chicken broccoli. Chicken and broccoli, right? Right, chicken and broccoli. And then it had a foil pouch inside of it that had the cheese sauce and it had another uh, pouch in it that, uh, that had the seasoning. But this broccoli, I tell you, there was is enough broccoli in here that I've been known to sweep more than that up off the floor after a busy day in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm going, no way. So this is one of the advantages to doing it this way. I could have uh, freeze-dried broccoli separate from this so that the person could go ahead and mix it all up and do it all together. But for this meal, I wanted the broccoli, the steamed broccoli, to cook in the sauce with the noodles, or in this case with the rice and the chicken and everything else so the flavors would intermingle uh, this way. And I, I put this in there, but I also chopped up and steamed two cups of broccoli florets. And I put them in there, and I, and, and I mixed it all up, and it was good. And I made enough of it, or in other words, it made enough that I was able to fill up this pan to maximum. Uh, this is, you don't want to put any more than this. This is just barely above the level of the pan. But there was still one cup left over. So I ate it, and it was good. 
But anyhow, so that's, that's why I've done that one there. Now, you don't always want to pre-cook your meals. What I've done here, as you can see, I've still got the noodles, and I have still got the seasoning packet, both of them, as a matter of fact. One of them has bacon in it, and one of them has the, uh, the, the seasoning sauce. But that left what meat I was going to put in there, which is chicken, of course. There was chicken in this one, too. But, of course, it was mixed in and cooked with it. This one, the chicken was put, uh, it, it came in, a, I bought it in a bag, uh, pre-cooked, pre-sliced, and I just chopped it up a little bit, and I put it in the front end of this pan. But I still had that foil packet left over that, that I needed to freeze dry. I couldn't, I couldn't package it for long term while it was still wet, even in the foil packet. So what I did was I put down a layer of parchment paper and then I cut the corner off of that foil bag and I squeezed it out and you can see how it's been squeezed out here. But before I did that, I weighed it and there were five ounces and that's gonna be important when I put the instructions in the bag so that I can tell the people how much water to put back in it so you don't turn it into soup or you don't, uh, you don't put too little or too much water in it. So I weighed it, there's five ounces of cheese there uh, meat, you don't have to worry about in the rehydration process, you just submerge it in water and it will not absorb more moisture than it needs. And then it'll just sit there and, and you can drain the water off and it'll be just fine. So with that, then I will package this in, in a bag, in its original bag as a matter of fact. I'll show you when this is all done. It's going to be a couple of days. It's going to take a couple of days for this to get done. But this is going to be in one bag. This is going to be in uh, a baggie with the instructions in there that you can put the water right in the bag and knead it around. Then these will be in there with a, a couple of holes poked in each one to maintain the vacuum. This will go into it. So this is going to be basically the same thing as this, okay? Only this one was cooked and prepared before it was freeze dried. And this one is going to be cooked and prepared after it's freeze dried. And that goes along with my belief that once something is dry, why do you want to cook it? Just to freeze dry it again. And that's what I did here, but I had reason to do it. If you don't have to cook something before you package it for long-term storage, and macaroni and spaghetti, noodles and stuff like that are, is a product that you really don't have to worry about, and I'll explain why there's an expiration date on there. It has, uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that this will last for 30 years if it's properly packaged. The fact of the matter is, they're not properly packaged for long-term storage in that, and I'll explain why later. I'm going to leave everything right here where it is, and through the magic of videography, I'm going to be back in about 60 hours, I think, probably between 55 and 60 hours, and it's only going to seem like maybe half a second to you. So with that, bingo. All right, it's been 56 hours since I put these trays into the freeze dryer and, and took them out, and everything's been freeze dried very well. And I have taken care of packaging and everything about halfway and left enough so I can show you exactly what I was doing. Now the first tray, which had the beef in it, you can see that I have packed um, half the beef with some of the Zatarans. You can see the beef right here and you can see the, the Zatarans package right here along with the um, oxygen absorber and instructions and, and everything else. So what you see that I have, I put the beef in a Ziploc bag along with an oxygen absorber inside of there. And this is what came out of the Zatarans box. It's the jambalaya mix and it's just the rice and the seasonings and everything. But you'll notice if you squeeze on it a little bit, it's wanting to hold it there because it's completely sealed. So one of the things that I do with a bag like this is I'll poke a hole in it. And that way when I go to vacuum pack the bag, it will seal tight. All right, along with that, I have taken the box and I've cut out the instructions, okay, on how to prepare the Zatarans, along with my own set of instructions indicating that they need to rehydrate the meat first and then prepare the, the, the rice mixture with the meat as per the instructions on the box. And all that goes inside that package. And of course, like I said, it all looks like this. And when it's vacuum packed, that's really hard. That's, um, that's much harder than a food saver. Um, my wife and I have a food saver. She loves using her food saver for short-term storage, th putting things in the freezer, and she likes the fact that you can put the food saver bag right in the boiling water. But it is a much tighter vacuum pack than a food saver. 
The um, shrimp is the same way. I took the shrimp out. Uh, there's half the shrimp right there. Put it in a bag like this and I make sure also that when this bag is sealed, I'll put one little tiny hole right up towards the top. Now what that'll do is that'll make it so that um, whoever's preparing this can still put water right in the bag to rehydrate the shrimp without it leaking out that very top and at the same time it makes it so that the bag will um, vacuum pack. Here's the uh, gumbo mix that came out of the box. Same thing, you want to make sure that you put a little hole in it, just one, up at the top corner so that uh, it will evacuate along with the instructions from the, uh, the gumbo box and the uh, rehydration instructions on this one is, you know, fill a bag with water to rehydrate shrimp and then drain and then prepare according to the instructions. Now, this was the tray that had the uh, chicken garlic already prepared because I wanted to add uh, the chicken and the garlic and also to demonstrate that, you know, you can do it either way. You can do it this way or you can pre-prepare it. Now, if you'll notice, this is a really smooth side and so is this one, but I didn't add any cardboard, I didn't add anything to it. The reason that that's so smooth is because when the tray was done, the um, chicken garlic casserole was completely dry, and as a matter of fact, it was one solid piece. And I broke it in half and I flipped it over, and that left the back side of the material, which is perfectly smooth because it was the side that the, was on the pan. And then I, I was able to pick it up and kind of sandwiched it together I put the um, oxygen absorber between it and I was able to put it in the bag and I labeled the bag exactly what it was, sealed it up and vacuum packed it and so this is good like I say for 25-30 years and personally I believe that it will last even longer than that because there's no oxygen, there's no moisture, there's nothing and it's kept in a cool environment so there's nothing about its environment that will cause it to go bad and break down. Okay, so here's an example right here of the, the one that I didn't prepare. Okay, now this was the cheese. Remember there was five ounces of cheese. And when I weigh it here, it, was, it only weighs an ounce and a half. So that means it lost three and a half ounces of water. So I have it written right here to add three and a half ounces of water to this cheese right in the bag. Now this bag I'm not going to poke a hole into, but I'm also not going to seal up. I'm not going to seal this up. I'm going to leave it in uh, unsealed so that uh, it'll draw a vacuum inside of there. But here we have the noodles. And I think, again, you don't want the noodles to maintain oxygen inside when you vacuum pack it. So I poke a hole in there. That way the noodles will um, vacuum pack inside that bag. Then here are the instructions that come off the bag and how to prepare the noodles along with uh, specific instructions about the rehydrating um, this and this. Now I've got this inside this gallon plastic bag but I don't really need the plastic bag. I was just putting it in there as an extra layer of protection while I prepared for this video. Okay, so this is the original bag that that chicken came in. And I remember one day I was using one of these and I noticed that this is a really tough bag. It's really difficult to, to puncture or, or penetrate. And I thought, well, why not, after the chicken has been uh, freeze dried, go ahead and put it back in the bag. So I turned this bag inside out, I washed it really good and I let it dry really, really well. So it's absolutely dry. And now I've got this chicken. So I'm going to go ahead, oh, and here's the seasoning pack, and uh, incidentally, uh, before I had the, uh, the chicken with bacon and cheese and everything, my wife wanted to use that for dinner. So I had to go down, and I got the, um, uh, a different Velveeta uh, for this demonstration, so there's no, there, there, there's no um, uh, bacon pack here. But anyhow, this is the seasoning pack and everything and then this is the bag and I went ahead and refilled out the bag it says instructions enclosed it's unprepared Velveeta chicken Alfredo with cooked chicken and then I've dated it so the first thing I'll do is I will take the chicken in the bag and I will tuck it into there 
Sometimes it's going to be a little bit of a tight fit, but it will go in. And it'll tuck right into the bottom of that bag. Tuck it in nice and tight, okay? Then I'll take the noodles and I will put them in there. Fold that top in, okay? Then the instructions. Instructions will go in there, right on top of the noodles. And then the seasoning sauce, or the seasonings, and then the cheese sauce will go in last. Okay, then I'll take it, everything's in there, and I want an oxygen absorber, which I have to cut this open to get one out. I'll toss another oxygen absorber into there. Now, the reason that you want to do that, even though I'm going to vacuum pack it, is even though I vacuum pack it, there's going to be a little bit of oxygen and air left in there, and I'm kind of a uh, fanatic about that. I, I don't like to have any oxygen left in there. So even after I vacuum pack it, that oxygen absorber will kind of mop up any, um, any last little bit of oxygen that's left, and it will seal and there won't be any oxygen in there ever, okay, until you open it back up again. So with all that in there, I'll go ahead and seal it up. And again, seal a meal will not heat up hot enough to make a good seal on a bag, on a seven mil Mylar bag. It just won't, and not only that, but it won't put a very good vacuum on it. So I really insist on using that impulse sealer. Now, vacuum packing it, I, I have another video that shows you exactly what's going on here, but I'll cut this corner off just so, so that I have a little tiny opening there. And then I have my vacuum packing needle all set to go, and I'll stick that in that little tiny opening. Sometimes you have to poke at it a couple of times, and then make sure I'm not poking it through the bottom but um, I'll stick that, it'll go in all the way. Now you can see that that's poked inside the bag. I'll turn on the vacuum packer and you'll watch this bag begin to vacuum pack. And admittedly, I have to leave it in there about 30 seconds, okay? So that it gets a very, very tight vacuum. Because just when you think that it's not shrinking anymore, there's going to be more, more air in there. You want uh, to evacuate 100% of the air or at least 98% of the air that's inside of there and then let that oxygen absorber mop up the rest of the oxygen so that you get the maximum seal that you can get inside the bag so it will last the longest. And then again, okay, that feels really good. Now... I have to show you this, and I know you can't see it, but where that macaroni bag was, I can see little points here that have the potential to cause a puncture in the bag. And I go along and I push those down so that when I'm handling the bag, nothing brushes against that and causes it to, uh, to break open. That's one of the reasons that I, I leave the macaroni in its original container and sometimes if I think that it's hard enough or it has sharp enough points, I'll even put it in a second container before I put it in the Mylar bag. That way it is prevented. Now, if you notice on this side, uh, it's smooth. And that's because I put that cardboard directions panel on top of it. All right, so I think that that's about good. I hold this with my finger and I very quickly pull that vacuum out of there, holding it with my fingers so that it maintains the vacuum and I come over here to the impulse sealer, make sure I've got enough, a, a good flat surface to, to seal on, and then I'll seal that corner off. There it is. And now that bag is completely sealed. It has everything in it that I need. And there you have it. There you have those four trays. Um, after I'm finished here, I'll go ahead and, and, and vacuum pack this and, and those the same way. 
Uh, I don't want to be redundant, and uh, for the sake of time, I'll, I'll do that later. But they both end up being just like this and just like this, just absolutely tightly packed and ready for long-term storage. So with that, I have, I'm in the process of making some other videos to show you other tips and tricks um, for using your freeze dryer and how to pack for convenience when it comes time to use the food. It's a little more inconvenient, it's a little more work now, but that's, that's okay. Because when we come into dire times, I don't want to have to come down to my food storage and start thumbing through all kinds of different bags trying to say, well, here's the meat and, and here's the noodles and yada, yada, yada. So I try to put them all in the same bag. So all I have to do is come down and say, okay, well, I got some gumbo mix here complete with shrimp. Open it up, cook it up, and I've got dinner, whatever else my wife puts along with it. And so with that, go ahead and hit the notification bell so that you can um, be notified when I have a new video out. Share this video because I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that would like to see what I'm doing and uh, maybe they might benefit by it. And also, another thing, um, here is my gallery address. I'm a professional photographer. This is my studio. I do a lot of different types of photography, but um, and there's a link in the header to my fireworks and to my water drop, but I do all kinds of photography. I'd appreciate it if you'd visit that and tell me what you think. And another thing, if you have something that you would like me to freeze dry and show you how I would pack it, let me know in uh, the comment section. And if it's something that I can do, I, I will do it, and I will let you know that I have chosen your suggestion for freeze drying to see exactly how to do it and how I would pack it uh, for long-term storage. So with that, I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking.